Mit navn er Trine. Jeg hedder Mette. Og vi har arbejdet med syre. Our aim was to investigate how acid affects different materials. We generally don't really think about how the acid in our food and drinks affect things. But we did. We wanted to find out what acid does to different household items. We wanted to find out if the acid in coke could break down meat if left in it for a couple of days. We wanted to find out if crust would grow differently if you watered it with coke. And we wanted to find out the pH of different drinks. The apparatus we have used to get all these information was chicken, beef, fish, crust, cattle, Coca-Cola, indicator paper, two glasses, several boxes and cameras. The methods we used to get these information was we put three different kinds of meat in three different boxes and poured cook over it until it was covered and put the lids on them so they were sealed and left it like that for five days. We put cress in two glasses and watered one with water and the other one with coke every day for five days. We checked the pH of coke, diet coke, cider, iced tea, orange juice, sparkling water, milk and tap water by using indicator paper. And we asked the dentists at Park School how acid affects our teeth. How does acid affect plants? We made this experiment to see how acid affects plants grow. The material I used was two glasses, cress, cotton, and Coca-Cola. The 17th of August I started the plant experiment, where I planted two glasses with cress and cotton. The first one I watered with water, and the second one I watered with coke. After five days, the one I watered with water was grown very big and was green, and one I watered with coke was moldy and had not grown at all. I think that the low pH in the coke affected the growth of the crust. How does acid affect meat? We made this, this experiment to see if the acid in coke could break down meat. The materials I used for this experiment was uh, three different colored Tupperware boxes, a small piece of beef, a small piece of chicken, a small piece of fish, and two cans of Coca-Cola. I started the project Sunday, the 25th of August, um, and I put a small piece of fish, a small piece of beef, and a small piece of chicken in three different boxes. I poured Coke over it until it was covered and left it like that for five days. After five days, there was a thin layer of some brown dust-like material, which I couldn't find out what it was. The beef was, after five days, moldy, and the top side looked like it had absorbed some of the brown color from the coke, and there was grease uh, mixed with the coke. And the, the chicken was, after five days, wider than in the beginning, and it had small air bubbles in few places. And the fish was, after five days, a little dissolved. Because if you tried to lift it with a fork, it would just fall apart. Um, and the almost smelled really bad. Um, my guess is that it was partially because the acid in the coke was trying to break down the meat, and partially because we just left it there in a sealed box full of coke for five days. But then pop you have syre to You can eat your tender if you drink or spice with syre. Syren opløser den yderste del af emaljen, og et tyndt lag af tanden bliver skyllet ind. Det tyndt lag kan ikke genvendes. Hvis det sker ofte, bliver tanden følsom, og det isner ind. Syreskader er derfor noget andet end huller, og en tand uden huller kan sagtens til syreskader. Syreskader er både svært og dyrt at gøre noget ved, så derfor er det ekstra vigtigt at forebygge med syreskader. Det man gør ved at begrænse mængden af syren i sin kost, og gøre den tid, man har med syre i munden, så kort som overhovedet muligt. Læskedrikke som f.eks. solvand, saftvand og juice kan også skade tænderne. Og sukkerfri læskedrikke indeholder lige så meget syre. De er tilsat syre for at give en frisk smag. Folk, der smager apelsin og citroner, kan også skade mælgen. Så derfor er det vigtigt, at man tænker over, hvad for nogle frugter man spiser. <laughs> Hvis man har fået syreskader, er det vigtigt, at man går til sin tandlæge og finder årsagen til, hvorfor og derefter begrænser eller helt stopper sig for brug af syre i drikken. Og hvis man så drikker noget sur, er det vigtigt, at man skylder sin mund lige efter, og så er det en til sin tid, og så er det sin tid. 
What is pH? In chemistry, acidity or base acidity is measured in pH. Solutions with a pH less than 7 are said to be acidic, and solutions with a pH greater than 7 are said to be basic or alkaline. The concept of pH was first introduced by the Danish chemist Søren Peter Lauritz Sørensen at the Carlsberg University in 1909 um, and revised to the modern pH in 1924 to accommodate definitions and measurements in terms of electrochemical cells. The exact meaning of pH is disputed, but according to the Carlsberg Foundation, pH stands for power of hydrogen. It has also been suggested that the P stands for the German potence, meaning power, but others refer to the French puissance, also meaning power, based on the fact that the Carlsberg laboratory was French-speaking. Indicators may be used to measure pH by making use of the fact that their color changes with pH. Visual comparison of the color of a test solution with a standard color chart provides a means to measure pH accurate to the nearest whole number. We measure the pH of eight different liquids. The ones to have the lowest pH was Coke and Diet Coke, which had pH of 2.5. Then we tested cider and iced tea. They had a pH of 3.0. And orange juice, as we thought, was very acidic because it has a sour taste. Actually, had a pH of 3.7. Then we tested sparkling water and normal tap water. And it turns out the sparkling water actually has a lower pH than normal tap water. Then we tested milk, which has pH at 6.6, .6, which means it's still a bit acidic, but not as acidic as going to hurt your enamel. What is characteristic about an acid? Well, they have a sour taste. Strong or concentrated acids often cause an itchy sensation on mucous membranes. They respond to the presence of pH indicators. They react with a metal, forming hydrogen and salt. They react with a metal carbonate during the formation of CO2, water and salt. They react with a base, forming water and salt. They react with a metal oxide, forming water and salt. They denature most proteins. All acids contain an H plus ion, which means that it can conduct electricity. And an acid is a substance which cleaves the protons when it's in water. This project has learned us about how acid affects our everyday life. Before we started this project, we knew that coke has a very low pH, but not as low as it turns out. It doesn't taste the low pH because Coke contains a lot of sugar. We also learned that the pH in liquid used to watering a plant is very poor, and if it's too acidic, it can stop or damage the growth. We also learned that Coke can slowly break down meat, but it's going to take a long period of time, and it's going to make a terrible smell. So, from all our tests and investigations, we have learned how dangerous a normal Coke can be. The skills we have learned we have learned to work together without actually being physical together because we have worked a lot of, uh, on the Skype, <laughs> over Skype and Facebook and text message. We've also learned to make a time schedule and to get the things done. And of course, we're making a board and we're going to push you. At the, end of, at the end of this project, we would like to say thank you to everybody who has helped us make this project. Especially our parents for helping and supporting us Elsina for being a good guide and giving us good advice and um, the dentists at Park School for giving us information about the team.